guys, Dr. Dana here from Greenhouse Integrative Medicine. So today I want to talk about THC. Why? I don't really like high THC levels. So for many of you out there who are suffering from chronic conditions, chronic pain, cancer, epilepsy, you may find that marijuana helps your symptoms. And you may also come to my office and find that I say, well, let's get you on the lowest THC formulation possible. Why do I do this? So there's a couple specific reasons why. As of right now, we do not have any randomized controlled trials in, in human beings. All we have is research on rats. In order to do the research in humans that they've done on rats, rats basically, they'd have to sign humans up for a study, give them high THC over time, and then kill them and dissect their brains. I don't think any of you would be up for that. But what they have found in rats is very interesting information and I'd like to present it to you here. So the first study I want to present to you is titled THC alters morphology of neurons in medial prefrontal cortex, orbital prefrontal cortex, and nucleus accumbens and alters the ability of later experience to promote structural plasticity. That's a long title. What does that mean? So according to the abstract of this study, the last sentence basically says, we conclude that THC may therefore contribute to persistent behavioral and cognitive deficits associated with prolonged use of the drug. So essentially what it's saying is that psychoactive drugs have the ability to alter the morphology or shape, which also alters the function of neuronal dendrites and spines, which are your uh, brain cells, and to influence later experience dependent structural plasticity. So that basically means that it has the ability to influence the structure and therefore the function of the neurons in rats is what they found. So they, they studied amphetamine, cocaine, nicotine, and also THC. And what they say is that repeated exposure to delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, which is THC, changes the morphology of these dendrites or brain cells in specific areas of the brain. And they go on to mention the medial prefrontal cortex, which has to do with decision making, the nucleus accumbens, and other areas of the brain. So granted, this study was done in rats. However, it does make me cautious when using high THC levels, especially for those of you who need medical marijuana on a daily basis, I would prefer that you be on a baseline oral formulation of something that's lower in THC and only using the higher THC, which is really the lowest THC that you need for breakthrough symptoms, if that makes sense. The next study that I wanna go over is a study that was published in uh, Neurobiology of Disease in 2015 and it's titled Adolescent Exposure to THC in Female Rats Disrupts Developmental Changes in the Prefrontal Cortex. This study specifically looks at adolescent rats. What the study shows is that THC altered many different areas of the brain, including the prefrontal cortex, and that adult animals exposed to THC during adolescence showed particularly interesting changes in their brain. And again, here are some highlights from that study. The first bullet showing that the endocannabinoid system undergoes maturation during adolescence and the endocannabinoids play significant roles in developmental changes that occur in the prefrontal cortex, and that THC disrupts the role played by the endocannabinoid system in the prefrontal cortex maturation process. Adolescent THC exposure impacts the functional maturation of the prefrontal cortex network. So it interrupts the, the developmental processes in adolescence of that prefrontal cortex, which is absolutely necessary to survival in our society and making good decisions, having relationships with other people, uh, succeeding uh, at work. So 
So I realize everyone's medical marijuana needs are very different because your medical marijuana needs depend on your specific condition, how long you've been living with that condition, whether you have pain or not, your age, the way that you metabolize, THC, and the other phytocannabinoids. But I do encourage you to try to get on the preparation of medical marijuana that controls your symptoms with the least amount of THC possible. I'm going to be doing another follow-up video on why I don't particularly love vaping as the primary means for ingesting medical marijuana for your chronic conditions. So please stay tuned for that video and please uh, follow us on YouTube. Just search for Dr. Dana Mincer and please feel free to go to our website as well, www.greenhouseintegrativemedicine.com. In peace and in health. Bye.